Hi guys, Tracy here. I just wanted to step in with a little voice over to give a little bit of context to what's about to come. I was unable to scrapbook from about late March until late, or I guess it would be mid June, uh, because of some of the stuff going on with coronavirus and the shutdowns and the impact it had on my business and our family and whatnot. We've all been fine and great and did really well through the pandemic, uh, which is still ongoing, but the shutdown of the pandemic, uh, which is now over in our area. Things are reopening finally. Uh, but I just wanted to give a little context. So this is some scrapbooking that I did the other day to just catch up. Oftentimes I skip a gap and I'll just put a page that says, oops, I skipped a little bit and then pick up where we left off. But I really wanted to cover some of the things that happened during the shutdown. And so this is my process for how I, I covered the gap. Uh, I have been selecting and editing and printing up, I think, 109 photos. I think there were 109 and so I have my, this was left over from something else that I didn't scrap, but I am going to scrapbook it. Uh, this is all of my COVID photos. So this is all from the shutdown from basically that week that Crop and Create I came back from and then until a couple of weeks ago when things started to restart. So I will kind of pick up with standard pocket page scrapping probably next week. And I'll be going back about two weeks when I start that. But so this goes to about a week ago, basically. So I'm going to tell you what my approach is going to be. This is going to be very unusual project life for me because I'm going to be doing it super fast, very photo oriented and um, documenting mostly on the photos. So I'm not expecting to need to use a whole lot of these cards, but I have them here just in case. These are basically leftover cards from my last few projects that I've been working on. These are a couple of different Studio Calico, Kelly Perky and Ellie Studio kits. All the cards here from basically like December, January, February of 2020 and 2019. Then I have a whole bunch of uh, labels here that I think I will use heavily. So I have lots of them here from a bunch of different companies and different kits and whatnot. So they're all right here, as well as these little circle stickers that I hope to use up today as well. Hope to have those gone. And then I have some chipboard pieces here that I hope to have gone. In fact, I think I'm just going to, well, there's only one left on this. So I'm going to just throw this sheet away. And uh, this says daily gratitude. So I'm pretty sure I'll get a chance to use this. Put this in with these other Studio Calico embellishments. And then I hope to use some of these and maybe these. Anyhow, if they're not used by today, they're going in the garbage because I, you know, like you get overwhelmed with too many supplies. So I don't want to have too many. I have a couple of sheets of word phrases here that I'm not too sure if I'm going to be using it. Like life is tough, but so are you. That's kind of nice. Um, when it rains, look for rainbows. It's the little things. This was a great idea. So you know, I think I can use these. I'll put them here with the embellishments. Then these are some letters that have been tucked into my pocket scrapbooking section for a while that I haven't used. So I thought maybe I'll use these on this project. I have this mostly for the lines to be able to uh, stamp on particular in particular photos because I don't plan to use too many cards. And these are big words that I might use in titles and whatnot. I don't know if they're relevant or not. I haven't even really had a good look at them. Then these are the stamp sets that I already had picked out from other things. I use this one quite often in my daily scrapbooking. So these are Night Owl and these are Early Bird uh, stamp sets from Hero Arts. Then I have this one, which is for Lift the Flap. I don't think I'm going to need that one. Uh, this one is Restaurants, but... Uh, but there's also kind of like on the menu and breakfast, lunchtime, dinner time. We can use those even though we didn't. We did order out, so I can talk a little bit about that. These are some phrases that I really like. Uh, some more phrases. These are both from Jen Scow. These are some more 
words and phrases that I might use. These are bad, bad news phrases like this sucks and crappiness and those sorts of things. Uh, online shopping, screenshots, currently streaming. I thought that some of this might be good for FaceTiming and some of those sorts of things. Some more food stamps. And then this one is that weekend stamp set from Studio Caligo that I had. Also, you know, Netflix, movies and TV and, and that sort of thing is unplug. Um, yeah, so I think I'll, I think I'll be able to use this as well. So I am going to start by sorting my photos. I have um, I have some photos here that are from a renovation that we did about halfway through the shutdown. And then I'm going to sort my photos into a few different categories. And I'm actually not going to scrapbook them by category. I thought about doing it that way. Kind of like here are all the fun things we did. Here's us working at home. Here's us eat. Here are the things we ate. Here are the things we watched. I thought about doing it that way. And I think that would have been a fun way to tell some stories. But what I ended up doing instead is sorting them into those categories, but then drawing a few photos from each of those categories as I went through the pages of of documenting it. So uh, here I am, I've got like one pile that's all news stories. I have one pile that's all food. I have one file, one pile there right beside the news stories, the one that has Scott with the cat on the top of it right now. That pile is all kind of like everyday photos. Things we watched is another uh, or kind of fun things that we did. I've a whole a whole pile dedicated to Animal Crossing. <laughs> And uh, yeah, so fun things we did, things we ate, Animal Crossing, uh, ways we stayed connected with other people. And I've got some work stuff and some, um, some photos related to online schooling, just a few of those. And then I also have another pile that is, um, regrettably, uh, a pile of photos related to the mass shooting that happened in my province, not far from where I live, uh, during the shutdown. So I ended up journaling on this extra piece of paper that I used on my COVID-19 insert that I used for my March pages. And this was some extra Felicity Jane paper. And I really liked the interesting size and shape of it. So I cut it down to eight and a half by 11, but the horizontal way. And I had a couple of Becky Higgins page protectors that were eight and a half by 11, but horizontally oriented. And so I pulled those out and used one of them here. And I'm I'm not putting journaling on the back side of it, but I actually am gonna go back with some other additional stories that I wanna tell. And basically that journaling, um, all that it says is it's kind of like a rundown of a time timeline of, of what happened and uh, how the, I guess, how the shutdown played out in my part of the world and the different phases that we went through, like not being allowed to do anything. And then eventually we were able to bubble with another family. And then it was gradually, uh, we were allowed to kind of go out and, and businesses reopen. So I just kind of documented that more historically than um, not necessarily my experience, but certainly from my perspective. So now I'm just kind of going through my categories and trying to decide what I'm going to actually scrapbook. And I'm, I'm kind of, you know, deciding where I'm going to start. So I'm pulling out a couple of photos. It's a little overwhelming, right? Having so, oh, I also have another pile that's just Easter. Um, it's a little overwhelming with all of these photos together at once. <laughs> so, so I'm just thinking about where on earth am I going to start with this? And I'm spending a little time just kind of getting familiar with uh, what photos I have and what stories I want to tell so that I can, you know, be as efficient as I can be. So obviously I turned off the camera and turned it back on again. I have most of my photos over here towards the right and they're in piles. And then this is gonna be my workspace right here. I'm going to be using a bunch of Becky Higgins Design A page protectors and I'm open to using other ones, but it turns out I'm not going to. I typically, when I want to scrapbook pretty fast, I just use Design A because it's pretty easy. And uh, I find that I have to think a little bit harder when I'm mixing and matching different and combining different uh, design page protectors, like design all the different letters that, that uh, are available out there. 
So as usual, I am starting by laying out my photos. The only difference here is that I have way more photos than what fit on each layout. So I am kind of deciding which, which photos I'm going to draw in for this page and which ones will wait for another page. And so I'm not really planning all of the pages at once as much as I'm just kind of filling up each page as much as I can before I move on to the next one. And so here are all of the photos. I just basically looked through my piles and I tried to arrange my piles in chronological order so that the most, so that the oldest photos were at the top. And that way I can kind of work my way down uh, in all of my piles. And as you can tell, I pulled in photos from all of the different piles on this page, which is my starting page, the very first page. And some of these photos, so most of them are printed either at four by six or three by four, but a few of them I printed smaller because I just didn't want to have so many four by six photos. So some of them I printed at two by three, which is my, you know, my other standard size that I often print. That's this one right here is two by three. And I find that two by three fits nicely horizontally on a three by four card. So, and, and it also gives you enough room to have some design elements or a caption or a title or something underneath of it, as you can see with this one I'm starting off with. And so at like usual, when I'm doing my pocket pages, I'm just randomly pulling one out and I'm going to start wherever I feel like starting. Sometimes it's the card that is the most straightforward or the easiest. Sometimes it's the card that I'm the most excited to tell a story about. In this case, this one was just pretty easy. I knew that my title was going to be Tropical Tuesday and that's the, the photo there. And uh, so, yeah, I'm just taking these these letter stickers. These are puffy letter stickers from Pink Fresh Studio. They came in a kit. I'm pretty sure they came in a hip kit back a couple of years ago uh, when hip kit was uh, sponsoring my channel by sending me kits every every month. I um, wasn't under any obligation to use them. They were just kind enough to send them to me, uh, even though I wasn't on the, their design team or anything. And so I do have plenty of hip kits uh, that I've used over the years. And this is one that they sent me and then I somehow misplaced it for a long, long time. And then I then I found it after a while. So it's uh, it was one of their pocket page kits from probably 2019 or two, no, it would have been 2018, I believe, sometime in the fall. So this is a photo that I really wanted to make sure I included in these pages. It's a photo of the Prime Minister doing his daily press conference. And so as you can see, I put Tropical Tuesday on that other card and I just matted it in dark green. And now for this one, I'm just using this really pretty turquoise bluish green uh, patterned card. I'm pretty sure this is a, it might be an Ellie Studio card. It could also be, I'm pretty sure it's Ellie Studio. It could be a Studio Calico card as well. So I'm just putting that on. I wanted to make sure I documented this because we watched his press conferences every single day. We also watched the provincial ones. So every day we were watching this up until a certain point and then we kind of stopped. It says Justin Trudeau's daily news conferences became part of our daily routine for 12 weeks in a row. I can't believe the man did these press conferences day after day after day, weekend and weekday, and um, it must have been exhausting uh, for him. But uh, and during some of it, his wife actually had COVID-19. And um, yeah, it, he got he got shaggier and shaggier as the days went on. <laughs> Uh, but I really appreciated that he was willing to talk to the, to the Canadians directly every single day. Uh, whether you agreed with what he was saying or not, he did a really good job of keeping us well informed. That's for sure. And then after he spoke, the ministers would speak. And uh, that was very helpful as well because you got to hear from the healthcare professionals themselves. Now this card right is going to go right next to the Trudeau one and it, I'm just putting that daily gratitude chipboard piece that I really wanted to make sure that I got into my pages here because it was the last one on the on the sheet. And now these are some vellum speech bubbles that came in a Studio Calico documenting kit. And this one has some lines on it, so I thought I would put some journaling on it. I'm using my Stetler Lumo Color pen here to write uh, the girls helped by cooking Hello Fresh meals. They didn't cook every day, but they cooked about once a week, I would say. 
Sometimes they'd cook a HelloFresh meal and sometimes they'd find something on TikTok that they wanted to try out. And so uh, we gave them the run of the kitchen. They could, we let them just cook whatever they wanted to one day of the week, at least one day of the week. They were also baking a lot. They ended up using the kitchen quite a lot during COVID-19, which was, which was very nice. Now this next photo that I'm using right here, this three by four, is a picture of the whiteboard that I had early on in the shutdown before school. So the shutdown happened during March break and they actually didn't know what they were going to do about school until a couple of weeks went by. So my kids were actually off school for, for more than just March break. I think they were off for two, maybe three weeks before the school figured out what they were going to do for online learning. And so during that time we had a schedule to keep the kids uh, so that they weren't just ba basically sleeping all day and then being on TikTok the rest of the day. So we gave them some things to do, like they had to do something artistic, they had to do something physical, they had to go outdoors, they had to do some reading. Then this next one is a three by four card that I'm just putting one of those two by three photos on. And that's a photo of a screen capture of the travel advisory that basically was advising us that our trip to the Dominican Republic, which we had already decided to cancel, we were we were not going to go to the Dominican Republic, even if there wasn't a shutdown. Uh, but, and we had cancellation insurance and everything, but it turns out that the airline canceled our trip for us, so we didn't have to do anything to cancel it, which was good. Um, and so, yeah, it just says, our, no trip to DR for us. April 15th came and went like, all the other days, one big blur. <laughs> so the day that we would have gone to the Dominican Republic was just another day. We did get dressed up. It I, We celebrated Tropical Tuesday and uh, got dressed up in tropical clothing. Uh, then this next one says, we foolishly thought this would be enough coffee. I just slapped a label on there and cut it off so that it was running off the page. I really like that look. It just makes the labels look kind of integrated into the page. Here's another one I'm going to do that with. This one is a purple circular label. And I do usually hang on to the little bits in case I want to use them for layering other labels together. And so this one says, Liv painted her Nike Airs, but I think they're Air Nikes, aren't they? I might have said that wrong. Oh well. And then I just add some underlining there. And I'm going to add underlining to almost all of my journaling. I just like the look. It feels more integrated into the page. And I just, it kind of anchors the, the words and makes them look a little bit less floaty. If you follow my videos, you know that I talk a lot about this idea of floaty and and either floaty embellishments or words that I just feel like they need to be anchored in, in place and it just makes the card look more cohesive and, and pulled together. So here I'm using this card. This is a hip kit card and uh, from an old hip kit card. Uh, Project Life kit and I'm using these really adorable Kelly Perky letter stickers that I absolutely adore and I'm spelling out the word theme days because we did celebrate theme days for not at the very end we kind of gave up on them at the end we were kind of just done with the whole shutdown work from home I'm still working from home but um homeschooling thing was kind of it got tiring as I'm sure you guys have all experienced yourselves as well uh, but but for good, you know, more than half of it, we celebrated these theme days. Some of us were more on board with them than others, and it varied from week to week how, how enthusiastic we were about it, but I tried to do it every single week. So our theme days were, and I'm just going to use this Ellie Studio stamp, and let me tell you the name of this stamp because it's one of the most versatile stamps I have for Project Life. I just grabbed it. It's by Ellie's Studio and it's called Noted Volume 2. And as you can see, it's all these journaling lines and I just find it so helpful for, for adding journaling lines to photos or to cards. I'm using Fish Tank ink here, which is one of my favorite blues from Lawn Fawn. And I just stamped this little oval uh, journaling stamp and I made it so that it, it overlapped onto the, onto the photo, although I'm not going to actually write on the photo. 
And what my journaling says here is Tropical Tuesday, Formal Friday, and Sunday Fun Day. So we got dressed up in tropical clothes every Tuesday. On Fridays, we tried to get dressed up and we would eat at the... The idea was that we would eat at the dining room table, but the dining room table ended up becoming uh, our school. So we ate at the, at the living room, like at the coffee table watching TV, pretty much the whole pandemic, like the whole shutdown. So I just scooched down those letter stickers so that theme days was anchored to the journaling a little bit with those uh, three theme days written out. And now I have this next photo, which is basically a photo that I took of my TV in the living room. This is one of the things we would watch when we were eating our supper is we would check out whether the Bare Naked Ladies had uploaded any selfie cam jams which they were doing not daily, but every couple of days they would upload a new one. We also watched a whole lot of Colbert. Uh, oh, we watched Colbert in the mornings because I don't think the kids were into Colbert as much as we were. But anyhow, so I just grabbed a label here and put uh, Bare Naked Ladies Selfie Cam Jams and it's pretty self-sufficient. It shows the four band members. Uh, and I'm going to embellish this later on at the very, very end. So my prime objective here is basically to just document. I want captions, I want titles, and that's about it. I'll go back later and do a tiny, tiny bit of embellishing. So this next photo that I'm do that I just did, it's done now. Uh, I just added a label. It says my work from home setup. It's just a photo of my what's my scrap area. You probably recognize it, but I. Uh, would use it for I kind of pulled up my my work laptop and my iPad and uh, my bullet journal and that sort of thing so now this next photo is a picture of the pandemic it's a game that we that we played we've we've always loved that game but we played it once during the actual pandemic we thought it was kind of funny to <laughs> to play it it was a little morbid but it, we played it fairly early on in the pandemic and uh, I just used this, I think it's a Kelly Perky stamp set. Let me grab it and tell you the name. Oh, I lied. It is In a Creative Bubble plus Studio Calico. And I think it's called Game Night. And as you can see that Game Night stamp, it fit perfectly in that little label. And that label is probably from Kelly Perky. Almost all of the labels that I have here are from, I, I believe they're from Kelly Perky. At first she was putting uh, cut apart labels in her stamps, in, in her kits. And then eventually she switched to label stickers. And uh, I have quite a few sets of those from the Kelly Perky kits that I used to get. They could be from Studio Calico as well. Some of them might be from Studio Calico. So there's there's probably a combination of Studio Calico and Kelly Perky label stickers there. I just used a Zig Clean Color Real Brush marker to uh, color in the word game night. And now, as you can see, I've moved on to these other three by four photos. And I'm using another one of those Studio Calico vellum speech bubbles. And I'm just using the grid mat to make sure that my writing is lined up and then as usual I'm just underlining it to make it feel nice and anchored on the embellishment and I'm going to run some ATG I find that you can't even see it and so I'm just freely using my ATG and I'm just layering that over the photo so that it tells a bit of the story it says in the early days we were allowed to drive to a trail to go for a walk this is the SMB Rails to Trails. And in my journaling that I didn't read all of it to you, but in my journaling, it did say that we were allowed to go for walks, but we weren't allowed to drive to go for our walks. So that's just explaining that in the early days, we were able to go to this, to this, uh, to this trail. So again, I'm pulling out my mini Misty and I'm going to do a little bit of stamping here because we actually did some takeout. And so um, I stamped this takeout stamp from, it's from Kelly Perky, it's called Eating Out, and it's just a little tag, and I use that tag somewhere else, but um, right now I'm just using the takeout part of it, so you can see I partially stamped it, put it in that fish tank ink from Lawn Fawn that I love so much, and I'm just going to put that over the phrase that came on that on that card, which I can't remember what it says, maybe love you or something like that. I'm just covering it up so that the flower is showing, but the phrase is covered up with the word takeout. 
Now I'm going to use the same fish tank ink and I'm going to stamp some lines using that same Ellie Studio stamp set that I talked about a few minutes ago and I'm using the fish tank ink and I have to double stamp it so I'm so glad that I used my Misty because it didn't come out quite as clear the first time or even the second time but third time is a charm those lines are nice and vivid blue now and I really love that color blue so my journaling here says we struggled with wanting to support businesses but also stay safe takeout chinese food took half an hour to clean slash redish but we didn't want moon tong to go out of business so moon tong is our little chinese restaurant that's up at the plaza that's close to our house at the kind of the entrance to our subdivision and um we love their their egg rolls in particular. They're not like the greatest Chinese food in the whole world, um, but they're certainly very, very good um, for around, like for a little plaza in the in the suburbs. So we, we wanted to make sure we supported them, but we had a lot, a lot, a lot of stress over what to do and whether to even try to eat takeout, takeout. but we ate takeout maybe once every two weeks or so which is really uh, not very much for us. Like we normally eat takeout every week. We found that eating pizzas was the easiest because you can just actually flip the box inside out and slide the pizza right off of the box and onto your own pizza tray and then go throw away the box and wash your hands. And then you've got ta-da, pizza. <laughs> Uh, so as you can see, I use that same stamp set again. That Ellie Studio stamp set is just amazing. And I'm stamping more lines and I'm going to write right on the photo. It says, Live and Soph cooked lots of recipes from TikTok, some better than others. This brownie and cookie in a pan was over the top indulgent. Oh my goodness. It was so, it was so oily. I can't even tell you how oily it was. They used a uh, cookie dough that their school had just done a fundraiser for cookie dough. And we had all kinds of cookie dough in our freezer that we were supposed to deliver to people, but we couldn't because we weren't allowed out. And so we ended up refunding everybody's money. And then we ate the cookie dough. Ah, that was the worst plan ever. We had so many cookies during COVID-19 during the shutdown. Oh my goodness. We just ate cookies every single day almost. That was a bad, bad idea. That same stamp set from Ellie Studio has these individual lines that you can stamp as well. And so I use the dot, the dashed one, and I'm writing here more TikTok recipes. This was supposed to taste like sour candy. And I'm going to go back and add some more details to that particular card towards the end. So I'll leave that for you uh, to see then. So as you can see, I'm just going to stick these into my pocket pages. And whenever there's two three by fours in the space of a four by six pocket, I will either just stick them to a grid card to a four by six grid card of which I have many, or I'll just stick it as I did right there to the back side of whatever is on the other side. So this one was a little tricky to put in because there was a flippity flap on the other side, but I got it in as you can see. I just took a little bit more, more caution and now I'm just sticking these in. I'm going to skip through this because this video is going to be pretty long. So here we are with a fresh new template, a new double page template. And what am I doing? Oh yes. So this one, Tropical Tuesday, that I scrapbooked, that was the first card I made on the other page. It actually didn't make it onto the page because I realized I wanted to tell the story about the theme days before I actually showed a, a card with one of the theme days on it. So I held on to that one and put it on this page. And so as you can see, I'm just repeating the process for page two here, just using my four by six photos in all of those four by six uh, spots. And then as you can see, it's almost all photos at this point. I've used most of the two by three inch photos. So most of these are taking up the whole, the whole card. And these aren't going to stay in exactly these places. I'm just, as you can see, I'm kind of playing around. I'm wanting to spread around some of the white space on, on the photos. 
so that it looks visually pleasing. And so there's a balance of dark cards and light cards, but also a bit of balance with the color. So the there's quite a bit of yellow in the foot in the the couch so I just wanted the 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 potato fries there that look also pretty yellow I wanted those to be kind of up to balance with the couch that's underneath of it so again I'm just kind of starting anywhere and here I am uh with this photo of this is taken from my scrap room slash home office with the door open looking out into the hallway and there's saran wrap across my doorway. They pranked me one day and I opened my I kept I opened my door and it wasn't at eye level, so I just walked right through it and, and uh, they kept replacing it every time I walked out and I did not wise up the whole day long. <laughs> this is how I'm storing my washi tape now and I really love it. I think I'm going to use my washi tape more now that I'm storing it this way. It's just all shoved into this uh, this little tray and it's like a little fabric basket that came with some Jetmax cubes that I got from Michaels years and years and years ago. And I love to use skinny washi as, an, as a way of underlining either a title or a phrase. So I'm using some stays on ink here because washi tape can be a bit of a slick surface. And that's another one of those stamps from the uh, noted volume, volume two, yeah, volume two, uh, Ellie Studio stamps and I just use the uh, same Pinkfresh Studio letter stickers that I used on the other page there to spell out pranked and I don't have to journal that like obviously I was pranked and who do you think did it my kids did so that was just a little bit too much washi tape so I just pulled this off this is washi tape from a recent Studio Calico kit I really love grid gridded washi tape it's one of my favorites and so this yellow gridded washi tape I I've been using it all the time in the past several months. I am just spelling out HelloFresh here with the mint colored HelloFresh, uh, not HelloFresh, Pink Fresh Studio <laughs> uh, puffy letter stickers. They came in that hip kit from a couple of years ago. And so I spelled it out kind of backwards so that it would uh, so that it would line up properly and then I put pill pulled pork Sammy's from and then HelloFresh and now I know that I have an adorable pig stamp from this Kelly Perky uh, stamp set that I really really love it's a foodie stamp set and so I'm going to use that same blue fish tank ink from from Lawn Fawn and I'm just having a bit of trouble here because the pig is stickier on, on, the, on the inking side than it is on the side that's supposed to stick to my Misty. And uh, I was a little reluctant here to re-ink and try to re-stamp because I wasn't sure if it shifted around in, in like when, see how it keeps pulling up. But anyhow, I was able to stamp that three times without, without messing it up too much. It's a little bit... Uh, the tail isn't quite as crisp as it could have been, but I really love that little pig stamp. And where Liv is a vegetarian, we don't eat a ton of meat. And so uh, so it was nice to be able to use that adorable little pig stamp again. Now I'm spelling out risk here, and I'm just going to, once it's spelt out with these letter stickers that are from Pebbles, it looks like. These are very, very old. I've had them for ages in my stash and uh, just adds that nice bold um title of risk and then I'm just writing just a quick game of above it and I'm going to underline it and that's just a bit of an in joke we uh, friends of ours um always say come on let's just have a quick game of risk and of course risk takes hours and hours and hours to play and so that's a bit of a of an inside joke there and now I have this photo of my coffee and I really love this coffee stamp set from Kelly Perky and I'm going to ink up this daily cup it's got an asterisk and I just love that stamp I've used it several times already but I don't get tired of it that's just a, a photo of the coffee that I made myself one morning with some delicious um, maple chips on the top of it a wonderful thing to add to your to your coffee if you're ever looking for something to sprinkle on top maple chips to die for uh, so now I have this photo of our um, family FaceTiming or I don't think FaceTiming ended up working so I think we're actually 
Facebook messaging here. Um, and I just used this Allie's, Allie Edwards um, label sticker here. This, I don't know where this came from. I think it came in a Studio Calico kit, but it is, I think, from Allie Edwards. And I'm just stamping the internet brought us together. And this stamp is from the Kelly Perky set called FaceTime. And I just liked how that kind of sums up how, even though we're all far apart, the internet allows us to kind of get together. And now this is Ellie's Studio, a Title Builder stamp set. I think it's Title Builder set three. It's the only one I have. And again, with that fish tank ink that I can't get enough of from Freckled Fawn, I'm just going to condition that stamp before I ink it all up with the ink. And I just use my white eraser for that. And now I'm going to stamp it with a block instead of with my Misty. I've kind of, again, I'm just kind of trying to go fast. I don't really care if the inking and stamping is exactly perfectly. I just want it to, I just want to get it done. That one actually stamped fairly okay. So as you can see, this page is coming together. Now I want to scrapbook these two four by six photos that make up my story of Easter. And so I'm gonna put them together and have some labels that are going to span the two of them. So here it is, this is one of those label stickers. It's one of the label stickers by Kelly Perky. I did look it up and those those label stickers are by Kelly Perky. And uh, they have a little bit of a slick surface to them. And so therefore, when I do my journaling on those stickers, I choose my Lumo Color, my Stettler Lumo Color Permanent Pen, which is a good slick surface writer. It dries instantly and it doesn't smear on slick surfaces. So it just says it was a very quiet Easter, but we made it work. And I labeled a little half circle, uh, I layered a little half circle label on top of it. And I'm just looking for a little something that I could put in that little space of the, of the half circle, just a little icon of some sort. So I'm just having a look at various stamps and I'm eventually gonna find a little heart from this adorable Jen Scow set. That one was a little bit too big, but the smaller one is going to work perfectly. And again, I'm going to use some stays on ink because as I described before, that's a slick surface and I don't want to have to worry about waiting for things to dry. And sometimes things won't dry on a slick surface. So I have this amiibo card packaging from Animal Crossing. And so I'm just kind of folding it over, but it wouldn't stay folded. So I just use my stapler to hold it folded. And then this is a printout from the 1917 movie that we watched. And I'm just adding one more of those Kelly Perky label stickers there. Thank goodness for those, because I use them on almost every card in this whole spread. It says Sophie had to watch a war movie for school. Again, very, very basic journaling, but it just gives a little bit of context. So it's not just random photos everywhere. It just tells a little bit about why. Why do we watch 1918? Well, that's why. I don't need a big long explanation about why because I'm trying to get this done as quickly as possible. Now, these are some photos of the end of our driveway. A friend of Liv's drove by and stopped their car and, and left a, a chalk message for her on the road in front of our driveway, which was very sweet of them. It says, hi, Liv, we miss you. I wish I could see you. And so we took pictures of that. And now I'm just looking for a label sticker. And I found one again, those good old faithful Kelly Perky labels. I'm just going to layer it over the two photos so that it's uh, just kind of, I don't know, feels good there. And uh, Sophie R. surprised Liv with a chalk message one night and underlined it and we're good to go. I don't know the brand of that card, the four by six card that that, uh, that that card is on because it was just from my stash. I have my stash sorted by color. So I'm going to skip through this. Here we are, I've got these two pages done now and I'm on to page number three. So I am just pulling out a couple of things from each of my categories so that again, I, I like to 
At, at this point, because I ordered them from top down from old to new, these are the newest photos, the most recent ones here. Uh, I do have, not the most recent, I guess, yeah, there's, I think there's a total of five pages here that are scrapbooks. So this is about the middle of the, of the pandemic. And how I'm doing this is I'm balancing it. I'm balancing it by theme so that there's not too much food on any one page, not too much work on any one page, not too much socializing on any one page. Those are the categories that I have. Um, and also by color and also by light and darkness. So that's how I'm kind of trying to organize them with all of those things in mind. And then filling in some of these Four, three by four inch cards in the spaces in between. Now on this spread, I have more stories to tell. Uh, this spread is going to include some photos that relate to the Porta Peak mass shooting um, and a few other things that I just want to make sure that I have some room to talk about besides just the labels on the photos. So I put a couple of, um, of journaling cards in there. So I'm starting with this one, which this is a piece of pattern paper that I had many, many, many years ago, cut to four by six and stuck in with my project life cards. And so here I am using it. Who knew way back when I did that, that it would take this long for me to use it. And uh, then with this one, I'm just adding another one of those Allie Edwards labels. And those are so beautiful. They're like a thick cardstock label. I just adore them. I want more of them. I used every single one that I have uh, on these pages. I'm using the uh, Just One Bite stamp from this Kelly Perky foodie stamp from a very long time ago. And again, Fish Tank Ink. And don't you love my gray <laughs> roots? And the journaling there says the girls surprised us with homemade crepes. So delicious. Yeah, they set out like a DIY breakfast crepe station for us one morning. It was really sweet of them. Now I'm just doing some journaling here. I'm trying to see where this journaling is from. All right, this is the, so this says, this is a story about, and then I wrote in the port -a -pic mass shootings, and then I just said, the killer was dressed as a cop and drove a fake cop car. He burned down several buildings and shot people as they fled. Uh, the crimes took place over 16 locations over two days and killed 22 people, the deadliest attack in Canadian history. So... I can't talk more about the mass shootings than just that because of my job as a psychologist. I have listened to so much heartache and pain and suffering as a result of this tragedy that I just don't have anything else to say about it. It's quite emotional for me, but I wanted, as it is for every, I didn't know anybody personally involved, but, um, it's, uh, yeah, unfortunate to have to document this. So here's another label that I have. Um, and hang on a second. Okay, yeah, I just had to go back and see where that label came from. It was a cut apart. You saw me cutting apart as I was talking. Um, it just says Nova Scotians tied blue, blue ribbons slash scarves outside to mourn the loss and mark the bravery of police who stopped him. And then hashtag Nova Scotia strong because that was the Twitter hashtag. And so uh, that will be a card. And now here I have a text and, and this is the only memory that I have, like, this is the only way in which I documented this. We were watching, there were a number of different concerts that were to benefit both COVID and Nova so Scotia Strong and kind of like to try to boost morale of Nova Scotians in particular, but I think Canadians in general, because we were going through so much all at once and not able to really connect with each other and hug each other and love each other the way that we should have been able to. So I just screen captured that um, basically it was a benefit. It was artists who were performing a concert on television and um, talking about COVID and all of the healthcare workers and grocery store workers and people who were braving um, the virus to help us all have 
what we needed. Um, and you could make a donation to the food bank. And that's all that I have as a memory of that is that we made a donation to the food bank. So I just put a little label on there that says a concert was held to help Canadians mourn since funerals were not allowed. Now this, um, this card that I'm writing right now has numbers one through five, and it says one global pandemic, two mass shooting worse in Canadian history, three military helicopter accident, Haligonian killed, four snowbird puts on a show to build morale. One of those planes goes down and kills the pilot who was also a Haligonian. Five, active shooter alert in our neighborhood days after the shooting. It was a false alarm. But so that's just kind of all that we were dealing with all at once. And then I also have a photo of our TV, which, which um, where did that go? Oh, it's over here. I have a photo. This is a three by four. It says, holy crap, of which I stamped in fish tank ink there. And uh, it says, we spent the afternoon hiding out in our basement. It turned out there was no shooter. And that's just a picture of the warning that came up. We were watching the news and a big warning came up that said, stay inside. There's another shooter on the loose, apparently. Um, but it wasn't a shooting. So that's good. It was in our neighborhood. Um... Now, this is a photo of, uh, I think this was actually a couple of days before the shooting. We uh, went out for a drive to a couple of our kids' best friends' houses to drop off some homemade things in a Ziploc container on their doorstep. We had to kind of drop it and then run back to the car. Um, here you can see the girls. They're actually talking through the door. Um, they look close, but there's a door between them. It says Sophie R's house. Liv and Soph dropped off treats for their friends, but they had to keep distance. Hashtag doorste doorstep drop off. And now here I'm writing on the bottom of this photo. It just says playing Jackbox with the fam over video messenger. And we had multiple screens up because we had one for Jackbox and one for seeing one for showing us and one for seeing the rest of the family. I'm just adding some lines to all of the journaling that I just did. And adding that one right there to write down Survivor Finale. We tried to watch this, the finale with Jen and Adam most seasons. And so that's a photo of, of the laptop with Jen and Adam on it in front of us. And then beyond it, you can see the, the survivors um, on the background on the, t on the big TV. And now here I'm going to write wearing our survivor buffs for the finale. It wasn't the same without a proper reunion, but it was fun nonetheless. We all, I bought uh, buffs. I bought a package of 12 buffs. They're not actual survivor buffs, but they're just kind of generic. Each one is a different color that I bring to whatever survivor finale get together I go to because we either host or we go to one with uh, Jen and Adam every year. Back in the day, uh, I used to have big survivor finale parties before we had kids. Uh, so it's kind of fun to return to that. Okay, so I skipped through that and here are my pages and now I have these ones all laid out. These are all the photos of our renovation. We, it's not really a renovation, we painted. But that was big for us because we've been wanting to paint for years and you had to just not think about it. It's it's such a big project because we had to paint the whole main, all of it, we have an open concept and so everything is connected to everything else. So once you start painting, you kind of have to paint it all. And you just had to not think about it and say, okay, we're just gonna do it. If ever we have time, it's, you know, during COVID um, when we're, we, you know, it's not like we're going out and bringing our kids to dance classes and all that kind of stuff. So as you can see, I started by placing all the photos and they're sort of chronological. So from a little, we didn't really take before and afters. It's more like, you know, early in the stages and then later in the stages. Again, I'm pulling out that skinny washi tape. I don't have a whole lot of skinny washi tape, but this green stuff will do the trick. I'm trying to lay down some washi to use as uh, some journaling lines. So I wanted, I kind of wrapped it around on one side and then tore it on the other side so that each strip is a different length. And then I'll just put my journaling on top of it. It says, we decided on the spur of a moment to paint the house. We all pitched in and did almost the whole house in two weekends of hard work. Really it was one weekend of very, very hard work. And then another weekend of 
just kind of pulling it together to finish it off because we were tired of it by that point. <laughs> what am I writing here? This one says Scott ordered this pole for curbside pickup, but it was taking too long. So he went into the to he went in to buy it safely in the store. That's what that says. And now I'm doing more journaling on those uh, Studio Calico vellum speech bubbles. This one says, even though we still have work to do, it feels great to have beautiful gray in place of the drab brown that was so 2005. This one says, uh, proud of our hard work. And then this label here says, this was a great idea. And then I'm gonna take this other one that says good vibes. And then this is a chipboard that says, yes, yes. This one, I'm gonna, it's another one of those Allie Edwards labels. And it says, our schoolroom is super bright and cheery. It was so bright that I was a little worried that it was gonna be too bright. And some may say it is too bright. Like I, I think, objectively, I think it's too bright, but I've ac it's actually grown on me and I, I like it. I like it bright like that. Now I'm taking some of these acetate hearts and these are from Studio Calico and they actually have little uh, pieces of clear of clear coating that you can kind of pull off to make them shiny, but I'm leaving the clear coating on them because I really love them, this uh, kind of matte color or not color, but the, with the matte finish instead of the gl super glossy finish. And as you can see, all I did here was some caption style journaling just to kind of tell the story as quickly as humanly possible. So I don't know if you can tell, but a few minutes ago, I did speed up the video to eight times the speed. Most of my process videos and the first half of this one was four times the speed, but this one is going to be super, super long if I keep it at the current speed. So uh, I just decided to speed it up. I pulled this card out because I just wanted to add a little bit of journaling here. It says us. We are definitely tiling the fireplace this time. Narrator, they did not, in fact, tile the fireplace this time. So, yes, we've been talking about file, tiling that fireplace for 13 years now. So someday it will get done and we will celebrate. So now I'm ready to move on to the last page of pockets that I'm going to be uh, basically like the last of my catch up phase. I am two weeks behind still, but I kind of consider that to be sort of caught up. I'm, I'm often within about two weeks of, of the current date. So I consider myself to be, you know, this to be the last of the catch up. So as you can see, starting the same way as I've started on all the other ones, which is lots of photos spread out. I have kind of run out of steam and decided to not put all of my photos in so there are a few photos missing but this is the this is the end I cut down that card and matted it on another gray card just to give it a little bit of space and room to breathe my journaling here says Liv missed her grade 9 trip to Quebec her graduation and her junior prom the la the least we could do is arrange a photo shoot with her friends when restrictions relaxed a bit we were allowed groups of up to five outside with social distancing so Scott plus the four kids were the five they did keep social distancing as best as they could for teenagers they did have masks with them as well so the two boys on the field there they were wearing masks and uh, it went pretty well it was nice for Liv to get a chance to wear that dress Dress that she had bought and and loved so much and been so looking forward to wearing and the boys brought the girls flowers it was so so sweet and the boy who she was going to go to prom with is uh, her best friend like she's been best friends with him since grade six so it's really really nice all these year late, years later that they're still such close friends he's a sweet sweet boy we love him this is Lewis Lake photo shoot and a little circle label and that label under the boys says Ryan lives bestie and Liam Mayel's boyfriend. Mayel's boyfriend, I should say. And now these are those Pebbles letter stickers that I used for the word risk earlier on. And I just spelled out bald. And then I wrote, uh, with everyone taking risks with their COVID haircuts, Scott decided to try shaving his after 12 weeks of shagginess. And then the photo on either side is kind of like the before and the after. This is just a photo. I used one of those Studio Calico speech bubble vellums and it says, we love you, HelloFresh, but this isn't just not cool. 
it was a smashed box that was on our doorstep. It was leaking everywhere. It was a big mess. Uh, this says, first outing by myself, drugstore slash post office. With one of those Kelly Perky label stickers. And that's a mask that my sister-in-law made for me. And now, at this point, I'm just basically assembling these and feeling like, well, I think I ran out of time. And so I'm just going to put it all together and then I'm going to pick it up again another day. And this is where you get to see how I use those four by six grid cards from Becky Higgins. They have the rounded corners, but it's not going to matter because the card on the other side is not going to have rounded corners. And some of these aren't finished yet. I'm just putting them in the pockets just to put, be able to put them away because I had to work. So here, are, this is actually this morning, and I pulled out another set of chipboard that I found in my stash that I thought might also work here. And then these are some of the other embellishments that I've had on hand all along uh, throughout capturing these pages. And these are the stamp sets that I've had all along. And so these, these, um, these photos and stories are almost all documented. So I'm just going to finish it up here. And I, I did this this morning. So this is that Kelly Perky FaceTime stamp set. And I'm using the FaceTime stamp and stamping it just at an angle here to be parallel with my uh, laptop edge and saying FaceTime. And then I'm doing some journaling here. It says date night details and under with, I put Nena, Papa, Jen, Adam, Tanya, Sam, and place, I put rec room. I made a little bit of a mistake there, so I had to white out some of it. Uh, details, it was Sam's idea to play charades for our family online hangout. And then the date, I just put May 2020 because all the days are the same. Who knows and who cares what day it was. And I'm just going to add one of these little hearts that I've been using all along. Those are the ones from Studio Calico that I'm not tearing the uh, facing off of to make them shiny. And now here is that one of those kind of iconic photos from the news from that time. Uh, this is actually from, it's a little bit out of order, but it says around here, most agreed with the shutdown in parts of the U.S. Protesters wanted to reopen the economy while health workers disagreed. And I didn't want to kind of go into the details. I just wanted it to be kind of captured that there was, you know, lots of unrest and people had strong feelings about we're pretty compliant we just do what we're told around here <laughs> people say don't go don't go out we just stay home for 12 weeks we're fine with that um i'm just adding a bunch of stickers and labels here this one of sophie says oh the places you'll go and then the label under it says although for now you'll go nowhere and then the other one says two of a kind these little moments besties and lots of fun and those are all from ellie's studio all of those phrase stickers and now this one, I thought it was kind of funny to show like two photos in four by six size that uh, kind of compare and contrast my workday versus Liv's workday. So I've got working from home. It's early in the morning and I'm dressed and I'm in my office and I'm working. And then meanwhile, Liv is still in bed with two cats lounging with her. It says at home learning starts at 10 a.m. So she's get to, got to sleep in quite late. Junior high starts super early around here. The girls were used to getting up before 6 a.m., leaving the house before 7 a.m. in order to catch their bus. So to be able to lay in bed until 10, I was just like, you know what? Enjoy. This is, it's, it's hard being separated from your friends. Go ahead. We can start school at 10. So that's what we did. Now, this one is some air fryer chips that Sophie had the idea to make. So uh, I wrote, I stamped on It Was Delicious. That's from the Kelly Perky foodie stamp set. And I just used stays on ink and my little mister, my little mist, mini misty tool just to make sure that it's stamped properly, although it did from the beginning. And now I'm just looking for a learning stamp. I knew I had a learning stamp and it, I did. It was from, I'm pretty sure it was from Kelly Perky. Yes, it was. It was from Life Lessons by Kelly Perky. And so I just stamped right here. It says lessons learned with a little cross through the box. And then I wrote the dining room was our classroom. I'm going to add this chipboard piece here. It says this moment. I just liked the color. It contrasts nicely with the blue on the walls in that room. Finally, blue walls in my dining room. I've had that awful burgundy brownish red in there since 
well, for 13 years. So happy to have nice new paint job in the background of all of my photos. So here I have this liner of a mask and I also decided to add a little bit to these other cards that I kind of thought were done. Just adding some chipboard elements here and some phrases. It says spring vibes and then one says love this and is a spring in my step just because it was kind of springy then. And uh, I just had to test that and see if it worked. I used VersaFine ink, which I guess I could have used stays on that probably, it turns out that this ink kind of did leave traces all over the place. So I, I think if I was doing this again, I'd probably use stays on ink. And also here I'm using my Sharpie pen. I probably should have used my VersaFine marker because I, it does make a bit of a mess. This is like a, a papery fabric uh, type of thing. It's it's a mask liner and and uh, it's, it's one that had been used. We don't use these very often, but it came in an order that we made of something. It came with like 20 of these. And so I had a used one and thought it might make a cool element for a Project Life card. So I'm just putting my journaling on it. It says, after 12 weeks at home and alone, we're finally able to carefully go out with masks or social distancing. And here I am realizing that it, this is probably not going to last very long if I don't go over it with a permanent marker. So this is my Stettler Lumocolor marker that's just going to make this more permanent. It will still, because the other ink is still there, it'll still get messy, but that's okay. That's part of what happens when you use ephemera in your pages is it's not going to be um, archival and it's, that's okay. So it's just a family picture of us all with our masks on that Scott's sister sewed for us. And so now I'm just going to put these cards where they belong. And then I'm going to just, uh, after they're in place, I'm going to have a look at the overall scope of the of this section of my book. So all of these pages that are my catch up pages, I'm just going to have a look and decide what other embellishments I want to put here. So here I'm putting a heart here. These are those same hearts I've been using all along from Studio Calico and the same uh, vellum speech bubbles as well. So I'm going to put a heart here, actually going to layer two hearts here on this Bare Naked Ladies photo. They're one of my favorite bands from years and years ago. It was nice to kind of, I haven't followed them lately, so it was kind of nice to catch up with them again. Here I'm just adding some more to this one because I forgot to write what this was. So I just added some more lines with that same stamp from the Ellie's Studio, uh, what's it called? Noted Volume 2 set. And I'm just writing uh, grapes, lemon juice, and sugar. And added a heart there. And just basically playing around with placement of hearts so that this section of my project life doesn't look too obviously different from the rest of it because I usually do quite a bit of embellishing on my pages and so I don't want this section to be kind of so obviously low embellishment. As you can see I'm working pretty hard to try to find a place to put all of these hearts. <laughs> this one I put a little word sticker on I think it's a smile or something like that. Or hello, no, it says hello. Another heart will go right there. I like the look of those hearts. They're kind of wonky, hand-drawn looking hearts. And I like the look of them as they kind of fall off a page. So I, I put them all so that there's just a, a tiny bit over, overhanging. And then I trim that off and I really like how those look. I wish I had more of those. I could see me using those moving forward like in lots of different, uh, lots of pages. But I've used so many of them on these pages that I cert I'm ready for a break from those hearts, <laughs> for sure. Okay, so you'll have to pardon the glare, but I just wanted to touch base before I finish this one up and put my Project Life album away until next time. Um, this was pretty fun to do, I have to say. I thought it was going to be a lot more overwhelming than it was. Um, but I just kind of started by documenting a, a very generic summary. And that really helped me to free me up to just stick stuff in with captions and not have to explain every single thing, which uh, allowed me to just focus on photos and captions and titles and a tiny bit of embellishment. And so that ended up being quite a good way to um, 
capture and document these missing weeks that I really didn't want to do my same one, two, skip a few that I used to do when I skipped some space in my project life. So um, I think I'm gonna actually make a video that summarizes some of the different ways that I have dealt with gaps in my project life because I've taken a couple of different approaches. And this one is um, what I preferred to do for this time, which is which is to actually go back and, and get these pictures into pockets um, with the very minimal storytelling, at least so that it's it's in here. And if I want to beef it up and add some stories, I've got room for here for additional journaling that I'm pretty sure I'm actually going to go ahead and add some more stories in here. And I think what I might do is use some of this lined paper, I have more of this, and just um, like make smaller, like I might have two or three more stories to tell um, in, in a bit more detail and from my own perspective as well that I might just kind of put on here maybe in some type of pattern, kind of cut them into three by four cards or probably slightly smaller than three by four in order for them to fit on the space. So that's what I plan to do there. And then the rest of this, as you can see, it just looks, it, it, it flows reasonably okay with the rest of my um, pages, which tend to be quite embellished. I, I tend to really take my time and embellish quite a lot on my Project Life pages. So as you can see, as you flip along, uh, this would be my last kind of page that I that I did that I actually spent a lot of time on. And then this doesn't really stand out as being too much different from the rest. Yes, it does have less embellishments, but it's not no embellishments, which is what I really wanted to, to have happen. So as you can see, these flow fairly well. And obviously this renovation page has the fewest uh, embellishments and stories just because it's mostly just kind of self-evident. And then there we go. So now I will pick up in my project life right here with my more kind of weekly or almost weekly pages that I plan to do. I'm really, really enjoying project life. I'm, I'm enjoying pocket scrapbooking a lot more than I'm enjoying 12 by 12 these days. So a lot of the rest of my process videos will probably be uh, pocket pages for the time being. Um, obviously, I've always been a big 12 by 12 girl and I will certainly make my way back to 12 by 12 at some point. Um, but for now, I want to, you know, this is my hobby and I need scrapbooking to be um, relaxing and as enjoyable as it can be. So I think I'm going to stick with pocket pages for a while. So take care and have a really great scrappy week and thank you for watching.